Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of Take Time. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig, and today we're going to show you some more segments on aluminum welding. Only this time it's going to be DC negative or DC minus. Now, I know that we've done some of that in the past, but what we're going to do in particular here is we're going to explain some of the higher quality issues if you're into X-ray quality welding of aluminum or you're in a high stress part. We talked about using helium gas, and that's exactly what we're going to use today. The difference is we're going to use an ultra pure helium. And so what does that mean to you? Well, you go down to your gas supplier and you ask for helium and you get a bottle. Sometimes it's a little bit contaminated because that particular helium bottle was used for little Johnny's birthday party and they left the valves open. So the helium is good, but the bottle is a little bit contaminated. So you start welding on DC and you can see the contaminants coming out. So if you watched segment one or part one of our DC negative welding, you'll see some yellowish and uh, you'll see some discoloration that's coming out of the uh, contaminants out of the bottle. Now, in this particular case, we went to a place called Sky Oxygen and we said we want ultra pure helium. And what they do is they guarantee that those bottles are well controlled. It doesn't go to little Johnny's birthday party. And you're going to see a significant difference. Now, the cost uh, certainly is, uh, is up there. So if you really do need this and you have an application for it, go the Ultra Pure Helium. Now in this particular segment, we're going to show you three things. I want to go a bead on plate because I want you to see the real shiny center that you get uh, when you're DC welding. It's hard to see. Uh, when you're AC welding, you get a nice, clear, fresh puddle. Uh, but in DC, it's just it's kind of foggy. So I want to do a bead on plate. And if you've never done this before, start with bead on plate and get these results. Once you get a few hours in this, you're good to go. You're the expert in DC welding. So I'm going to do a bead on plate. Then I'm going to take a 3 8 inch thick material, and I'm going to go butt to butt and weld it with 100% penetration. So let me get, get my gear on, and uh, we'll start with the bead on plate. Okay, we talked in a previous segment on the tungsten or the size of it. And because we're with helium, we don't have to use as many amps. This is only a 200 amp machine. I'm using a 332 diameter tungsten. I'm using a laser tungsten. You've heard me talk about it in the past and I'm starting to put some hours on this. So just want you to know it's 100% helium. I'm running at probably right around 50 to 60 CFH. Make sure you go on to, to the helium scale. Okay, now this regulator that I have is a Mr. Tig regulator. It has an argon scale, a helium scale, and a CO2 scale. So go to the helium scale, and you're going to be somewhere around 50 CFH helium. So just know that I don't require the amperage because helium is such a hot gas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bead on plate. I'm going to do an arc initiation. This filler is 332 diameter. It's 4043. Uh, and I'm just using a little air-cooled torch. This is only a 150 amp torch, so you can see that uh, I'm able to accomplish a lot by using this helium. So let's do the bead on plate. I'll talk you through it. Okay, so it, it starts a puddle almost immediately. Okay, so when you dab the filler, you actually got to shove it in a little bit. And look for the center of that puddle because it's nice and clean, it's nice and shiny. And you know, you can just run it at a pretty good travel speed. Now I'm not trying to penetrate, I'm just trying to do a bead on plate just to get my eyes adjusted, just to get the machine set. And when you get to the end of the weld or the weld termination, this, uh, this hot gas makes it difficult, so you've got to add a little extra filler there at the end. And it tries to leave a little, a little divot. So this, this is the end result without any cleanup whatsoever. And you can see right in the center of the weld, it is shiny. And that's what I saw. So just to get that weld on there took me probably 150 amps or so. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this over. Uh, we're going to set up to a butt-to-butt 3 8 inch plate. And I'm going to put a ceramic backing just so it has a place to fall. Otherwise, it'll just keep falling. 
Um, and we're only going to use 200 amps. That's all this machine will go. So uh, let me do the setup and I'll get back with you. Okay, I've taken two plates of 6061 T6, butted them together, no gap whatsoever. Put a tack well at each end. I'm using 4043 filler material. Now, I did go ahead and I put the ceramic backing. It's got a tape on the back. That tape typically gives out as soon as it gets gets heated up. So uh, I've got the plates actually sitting on the ceramic. Um, so I've got it grounded. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the 200 amps. Uh, I'm going to sit and dwell and try to get it to punch through. And the hard part in all of this is seeing when it punches through. You'll see the shiny center of the puddle, but you got to be patient. Yeah, so I'm going to wait and wait and wait. Uh, once I see it punch through, then I just start running. And I'll be running probably somewhere around 10 to 12, maybe even as high as 15 inches a minute. So let me turn the machine on and uh, we'll get started. Well, another thing you need to know is that when you're, when you're welding something this thick, it's okay to turn the pulser on. Now, I ran the pulser at one pulse per second. Background current was 50%, so I went from about 150 amps up to 200 amps, one pulse per second. So you could see the driving effect. Every time it would drive, I would add filler material, and then it would pulse and pulse, and I can keep up with one pulse per second. Uh, anything faster than that, you start losing control. So this, this meets the 2% of the time that I ever use pulsing. Okay, now that I, I made the weld here, uh, hopefully I've got 100% penetration. That was the goal. But you gotta ask the question, why wouldn't you V-prep this? Well, I gotta tell you that when you do the DC process and you punch through, you don't put as much stress into a part, you don't get the shrinkage and distortion. So if you're doing something very hypersensitive, this is a good technique to use. And I wanna do a shout out to a friend of mine that. Uh, I met him about 30 years ago doing a GE engine repair where we had to use this technique and the guy's name is uh, Jody Collier. He was a young power plant engineer at Delta. So uh, Jody, uh, this one's for you. It's been a while. So let's take a look at this and if you take a look on the top side, remember DC doesn't have any cleaning action at all. All we're doing is driving into the material, actually have to add filler. If you don't add filler, you're probably going to have cracking. So the top side is not a clean looking material, but you can get the smut off pretty easy just by wire brushing. And in many cases, you do a little bit of machining if this is a, an aircraft part. But let's, let's turn this thing over. Remember, this is 3 eighths of an inch thick. It had no V-prep whatsoever. We used a ceramic backing, and you can use a fiber backing, you can use just about anything that you want, even if you have uh, no backing. You know, it'll continue to drop if you have no backing, but if you get good enough, you can handle it. But take a look at that penetration. Absolutely outstanding. Now, what's even more amazing about this, if you were to AC weld this, alternating current, using all the procedures that you read in all the books and handbooks, you would have to have somewhere around 400, 500 amps to be able to punch through this. I used a 200 amp power source. I used an air-cooled, and this is only a 150 amp rated torch cable, Superflex cable, and this is just a standard CK17 torch. 332 
diameter tungsten. I used the laser tungsten. I tried a couple of other tungstens in there, and on helium, a couple of the other tungstens uh, just didn't respond that well. So just know that thoriated works good on here. I've had the, the laser tungstens work, worked well on it. Uh, I tried the lanthanide. The lanthanide was kind of sensitive to it, so I changed it out and put the laser back in. So I uh, just want you to know this is just another way to weld aluminum, and we're going to keep you updated as we can. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.